we're going to shine a flashlight on some dark stuff. Okay. In 2012, I was a heroin addict and a Craigslist prostitute. Wow. Okay, so that isn't the first thing I list on my resume, but it is in the fine print. Okay. So I, in all seriousness, that period of my life was so dark and so oppressive that I had convinced myself I was a bad person. You know, because of my mistakes and behaviors, and what's worse is, have you ever had your family say, how could you do that? Who are you? You are a bad person. Have you ever tried to convince yourself that you're a bad person because of your mistakes and behaviors? Yes. Yeah. Well, I have news for you guys. We are not bad people. We are suffering from pain. And it wasn't until I decided to transmute my pain, that's my, the dancing I learned, it's crazy, <laughs> that I um, began to fully heal and ultimately blossom. All right, what does your pain look like? Let's do an exercise. I'm not going to have you stand up and dance, but I do want you to close your eyes. Humor me, close, close your eyes. And I want you to envision the most painful thing you have ever been through. And I'm not talking about step on a Lego kind of pain, although, ouch. Uh, no, I'm talking about the big stuff, the emotional stuff. What does your pain look like? Does it look like debt? Does it look like weight, abuse, a broken acrylic nail? You lucky Har Paris Hilton, you. I'm kidding. Anyway. Um, okay, so you're imagining your bad thing, your, your pain thing, your D-Day, right? Now I want you to imagine the opposite. What does that look like? What does it feel like? Is it um, a, a, a savings account? Is it a meal plan? An escape? A nail salon? We're not judging. We're not judging. Okay, now open your eyes. You just envisioned the most painful thing that happened to you, right? You sat in that energy, and then you imagined the opposite. Oh, it was pretty easy, right? Right. It can be that easy to transmute your pain because, just like we've all been saying here, thoughts become things. What you think in your mind about yourself is what your reality is going to mirror right? So the first step you have to take is starting to change your thoughts. So I came up with a three-step process. I wanted to keep it pretty simple because just like my pain was so excruciating, the people who need to heal from the really bad stuff, I wanted to keep it easy. So the first step is actually um, the easiest, and I did that on purpose. It is heal your inner child. <laughs> Everybody has that soft underbelly of that five-year-old version of yourself that just loved to dance, loved to sing. You know what I mean? So find that thing inside yourself that you love to do and start doing that in your reality. I was 10 years old when I was first sexually abused by multiple teenage boys multiple times. I was introduced to sex acts before I even knew what sex was. So it only made sense that my entire consciousness was formed around the idea that I was only good enough to be somebody's sexual object. So adult Kristen sought the profession that I thought suited my only skill set, sexual solicitation. But like with anything else that's dark and depraved and depressing, we can't thrive in that kind of an environment, right? So I thought, I have to change. I want to do the opposite. So I started imagining the opposite. What does that look like? So I thought, wh what if instead of selling my metaphorical cookie, right? What if, what if, stay with me, what if I sold literal cookies? 
Chinese. <laughs> Why the Girl Scout? When I was a kid, I loved being a Girl Scout, you know, selling those boxes of cookies and getting a pat on the head and a merit badge for a job well done, you know? A Girl Scout. And I know what you're thinking. I know what you're thinking. She did not. She did not sell cookies door to door like a damn Girl Scout. You bet your bottom dollar, that is exactly what I did. Wow. I started a cookie delivery business called Candy's Cookie Company, and I named the flavors after names of strippers, you know, like honey and cinnamon and ebony and ivory. You get it. <laughs> so I was, there's my daughter right there, she's so cute. Um, I was selling cookies and I was transmuting my pain while simultaneously healing my inner child. Now, I'm not saying you've got to put on a costume and do a soft shoe in a dance for a stranger slinging cookies door to door. No, I'm here to tell you that it is free to climb a tree. It is absolutely free to go to a park and slide down a slide or swing on a swing. It's free to chase a butterfly it's free to interpretive dance into warrior positions. You know what I mean? So I encourage you, think of the things that brought you joy as a child and bring them back into your reality because you will be well on your way to transmuting your pain. Step two is actually very difficult. This is the hardest step. It might take you years. It took me years. But it is find or create your have, okay? So if you're doing something that you don't necessarily like, you're, you're in a dead-end job, you're not, you're not getting a raise for nine years, you know what I mean? Where there's a will, there's a way. And there's a reason that's a popular statement, because it is absolutely true. In 2022, after I had gone through a healed my inner child, I wanted to explore becoming a teacher. I adore children and I'm super good with them. So I decided I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be a teacher. So I interviewed with a, uh, an organization called IDEA Public Schools to be a substitute teacher. And I was hired. And, I, and then, <laughs> and then, and then they were like, great, let's just run your background check and we'll be all good. And so I could not be hired because of my criminal record. So I thought, what do I do? Those were my dreams. Come on, microphone, give me a break here. Ooh, okay, yeah, how's my hair, guys? Beautiful. And how can you do Thanks. Okay, um, those are my dreams. What? Thank you. Let me just cut it down. Thank you, Dr. Deb, thanks. Um, those were my dreams, right? What am I going to do if, if the universe and the man is giving me a big fat no? So I thought, find or create my path. What am I good at? What do I have that they cannot take? Well, I'm creative. I'm artistic. And then it hit me. I'll write a kid's book. I will write and illustrate and publish a kid's book because if I can't physically be in a classroom inspiring children, then my book can physically be in that classroom. Mm. And I know what you're thinking, I know what you're thinking. She did not, uh, she did not write and illustrate and publish a whole last kid's book. Wow. That's your bottom dollar! That is that's my bottom dollar! Pinky and words, I swear, this microphone, y'all, Jesus, take the wheel. <laughs> I just can't with this. I can't All right. Piggy Boots is a book about a little eight-year-old girl with grandiose dreams of becoming a clown. So she marches down to Town Square Circus and is like, hey, I'm your new clown. And they give her a big fat no, because she's eight, obviously. So instead of letting the man tell her no, she joins forces with an alleyway cat, and together they create their own circus out of garbage. It's beautiful. I wanted to give the message to children, you know, do your dreams. Overcome all obstacles to do what you want to do. Oh, there's me and my clown partner, Spike, their shoes. Okay. 
<laughs> step three is uh, the most fun. I love this step uh, because it's the most powerful. And that is help others. You can heal yourself faster yes. by helping others. Yes. You know, so RuPaul, who is one of my, uh, just, I love him so much. He was quoted on The View and he said, I think that our life's mission is to clear out the debris in our consciousness, you know, the garbage, to allow our light to shine through. We are all universally and energetically connected. We are. So it looks like I'm standing up here and you're sitting there and, you know, the camera guy's fishing through his camera thing, but we are all, we are all of one. We are united. So if I help my friend clean her house, I'm actually helping myself because she is no different than me. I am no different than you. You are no different than the homeless man you walk by on your way to work, all right? So I thought, um, oh, I did this early. Let me do a redo, hold on. Okay, so, so I thought, help others. I thought, how could I help others? What do I have that I could give to help somebody else? And I thought, well, I have experienced some things that not a lot of women, well, <laughs> relatively, have experience with. So maybe I should help other you know, childhood sexual abuse survivors. So I started volunteering at Refuge City. It's an organization that helps uh, victims of human trafficking get free counseling, their GEDs, and you know, we did outreach programs. And I used my skills of art, baking, poetry, being funny, I guess, um, <laughs> to inspire those kids. You know what I mean? Because this organization was, was run by, bless their little souls, a couple of church ladies that had no idea what these kids had been through. They were having issues with the kids being like, you don't know me. And so I show up and I'm like, yeah, I do, sit down. <laughs> I'm gonna help you heal. <laughs> and that is how I decided to help others. So ask yourself, you know, go back to your pain thing. And I urge you, this is my call of action to you. Research an organization that fights against the monsters that caused your pain thing, okay? And plug yourself in, volunteer. Because by defeating those monsters, I was defeating the people that used and abused little 10 year old Kristen. Mm -hmm. Nice, love it. Love it. Thank you. Okay, so if you liked my speech, please consider my three steps. <laughs> Kill your inner child, <laughs> find or create your path, and help others. Because we are all of one thing. <laughs>